my cup of tea. In the year since Cap Dom Harvey Cap published his book, Running a Love Story, he has <laughs> achieved his long-held goal of running a sub-three-hour marathon, run the Tokyo Marathon, earned his six-star medal for running all of the world marathon majors, and run get those five marathons in five days, which is incredible, raising over two hundred and thirty thousand dollars for cancer treatment for three-year-old Kawalani Forbes. His book has just been republished with new chapters, and it also has been chosen to be made into an audio book. Funny story there too, although. The they chose someone else to voice it. <laughs> so, the man who speaks for a living, it is great to have you back on the cafe, Dom Harvey. Yes. Great to, to be back here. Yeah. Great to be back here. Can I have a, can I have a sip of your vodka? We can have a sip. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Kylie, the strong. truth is out there. It's a card of him, T. Um, hey, congrats. Well done, you. Gosh, that's impressive, what you've done. That's really, I mean, you, that's impressive. Really, really impressive. Um, 25,000 copies sold of your books, all editions. That's a huge achievement for a New Zealand author. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's not enough to retire on. It's not like a J.K. Rowling amount of money or anything, but... It's no Harry Potter. Yeah, okay. but uh, it's all right. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah. And were you surprised, Tom, that 25,000 people were interested in a book about running? <laughs> well, your mum read it 25,000 times. Well, obviously not as surprised as what you were, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. <laughs> no, no, not just, the, not just the running book. I've, right. I've done three books, so that's the sales of all of them combined. Ah, OK, cool. OK, cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> we clarified that. So tell us about this one. Um, oh, so I, the, the, this came out a year ago originally, and um, after I did the last of the World Marathon Majors in Tokyo, and finally uh, achieved this long-held goal, goal I have of breaking three hours in a marathon, the um, publishers came, came to me and said, do you want to do like an updated version? Um, so yeah, I jumped at the chance. It's like a chance to rewrite history. And there's a lot of, lot of people, in particular middle-aged men, who aspire to break three hours in a marathon. So. They thought it's worth um, writing about it. And what I love too was looking at some of the feedback that you got on Facebook from people that picked up the book and read it. They were really inspired by it. Was, was that part of the reason for writing it? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think you kind of you kind of hope that it's going to you know maybe inspire someone or inspire some people. So um, it was it was I mean it was flattering. Yeah. Is immensely. running just something people get? You either get it or you don't. Can you learn to love it? Well, that's the funny thing. I, I say to people, like, anyone can run. People go, oh, I'm not a natural runner. But it's like, it's, it's just extreme walking. If you can walk, you can, you can run. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, that's fair enough, I guess. But do you get that running high? Where you get that, like, that euphoria? They're like, oh, I'm a runner. I'm doing all this running. I'm amazing. Yeah. I, 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 I say to people, like, it's um, that runner's high thing. You, you don't always get it. But what happens is that you go for a run, and even if you're having the most miserable time, yeah. as soon as you finish and you're having a hot shower afterwards, you feel amazing. Yeah, that's true. No one you ever feel... feels bad after they've been for a run, do they? Yeah, too right. You always feel better than, than what you did before. Yeah, it's just getting through it. Sometimes it can be a killer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's talk about the audio version, because it's very rare that a Kiwi author's book gets picked up to do an audio book. Uh, this has been chosen to be an audio book but ironically you as a man who speaks for a living as Mel said didn't get chosen to be the voice what happened there did you audition or did you could, could you not do it what That's happened not believable yeah, enough right. <laughs> uh, yeah I, I auditioned and I um it, it was the role I was born for <laughs> <laughs> and I, I missed out on it so um the the people at audible uh, you know which is a division of Amazon they sent me some sample chap chapters they said hey we've got this guy it sounds amazing I don't think they were trying to be rude but and I was listening to this guy and he, he was telling my story and in your voice, yeah. too, which is weird. Actually, we've got, we've got a bit of that audio, haven't we? Can we have a listen oh, let's to that? Not, let's yeah, not, yeah, not yeah, let's listen. listen. Okay, well, let's hear it then. Introduction. As I write this, it's early November 2016, and 17 days since I ran the Berlin Marathon. Ah, oh, okay, good. I can see why they chose him. He's quite nice, can isn't you, he? Can you, but can you just do it for us? Just read that bit, even though it seems to be different, but read it. Oh no, I don't sound as good as that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I admit it, they got the right guy for the job. Okay. No, it's a nice way to listen to a book too and get inspired, isn't it? Just have somebody read it to you because I'm lazy like that. <laughs> Can't really read that well, so need someone to read it to me. What an achievement. And something else you've done too, five marathons in five days. Tell us the backstory to that because I, I watched that unfold mm. on Facebook. I listened to it on the radio and it was just so amazing. I can't believe you managed to do it. But what was the backstory? Why did you do that? Oh, thanks, thanks very much. Well, I mean, the, the book is about some sort of selfish goals and pursuits I had. And then uh, we, we met this, um, this family, the Forbes family. Uh, they came in uh, to our radio show the morning as they were leaving for Barcelona with their sick little daughter, Kawalani. And so we had them on the air and plugged their give a little page and then sent them on their way. 
And they, they just really touched us as a family. Yeah. And we had a meeting afterwards and it was like, man, we've got to do something else for them if we can. So I suggested maybe like, like a sort of run-a-thon, like five marathons in five days. And, uh, you know, then your wheels were in motion straight away and it was, it was going ahead. And I felt sick at the thought of it because I really wanted to help the family. But, I, you know, I didn't want to let anyone down and I wasn't even sure I could do it. Yeah. Um, but uh, in, in the end, we, we got through it okay and, um, you know, so much money was raised for this family. They got just about the amount they need. I think we raised about 230000 in total. And isn't it nice that you can, you're in a position where you can actually do mm. something like that to help people? Is That's a really nice part of your job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because up until now, it's just been about chasing my own sort of selfish mm. goals. And the fact that you can, you know, use something you really enjoy, like running, to, you know, help someone else or make a difference. I think it's, it's really humbling. It's really cool. Do you still enjoy it, though, after doing five marathons in five days? I mean, that's, that's extraordinary. I can't even imagine how you began to do that. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do. I was a bit nervous about it because I thought, you know, geez, it could it could break me down forever. Like mm. I'm not a young guy anymore, um, so it's the sort of thing it could, um, you know, keep me off my feet for life. But no, it bounced back okay, and uh, yeah, still still love it just as much. I mean, running has given me given me just so much joy in life. And uh, you know, I've worked with you for a long time, Dom, and quite often I've thought, how does this man's mind work? If I <laughs> if I read this book, am I going to learn about what motivates you in life, or am I going to learn about running, or am I going to learn about both? Probably a bit about both. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Is it yeah. a book for runners, or is it a book for people that just want to be inspired to do something? Mm, I think the latter. Okay, yeah, cool. it's, it's it's not about runners. Like if you if you if you're not running and you you know you want to maybe feel inspired and give it a go. I think it's a book for those people. It's definitely not a how-to book because I'm not, I'm not particularly good or fast or anything like that. I'm just someone that enjoys it. No, I've seen your Blum and Strava things, whatever they're called. They pop up every now and again on my, my one, which has me doing nothing. You are pretty fast. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah, well, but not, not, yeah. not fast, fast. You're like, not I'm just like a... the man who just did the Berlin Marathon. Oh, Kip oh, Yeah, wasn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah that he's incredible. extraordinary. So what started you running? Um, just being overweight, really, and wanting to lose weight. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was quite quite big, but when you, I'm quite tall, so you can sort of you know, hide the weight in a lot of places. And then one day I just looked in front of the mirror and was kind of grossed out by what I saw and thought, got to do something about it. <laughs> um, and then I, lo I lost all the weight I wanted, and then just somewhere along the line just sort of, you know, fell in love with running. It's time out for you too, really, isn't it? Although it's, it's you know, it's a big pressure when you're doing a marathon, but you actually enjoy running because it gives you time to think. Yeah, absolutely, and the fitness aspect is good. When, when you like me and you've got a few haters, <laughs> it's good if you can run away. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, top tips for people that want to get into running. Um, do you think it's dividends for you? I would say um, start, start off slowly. Don't go all gung-ho and start with a 10K or something. Start real slowly. Um, otherwise, you're going to risk injuring yourself, and that's not fun, and that's going to ski, ski you off for life. Um, also, get a good pair of shoes. Go to a good shop like yeah. a shoe clinic or shoe science or something. Get on their treadmill. Um, it's the, uh, it'll cost you a few hundred dollars maybe but it's other, otherwise it's a cheap sport like there's no other cost yeah. so um, you know do it right and just ease yourself into and it get some good it. shoes so now that you've done all these marathons you've, you've kind of ticked all the bucket list things that you needed to so what's your next goal what are you going to do next yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like the um, the five and five, the um, to raise money for the Forbes family. That's just something that sort of you know, just sort of, we sort of stumbled across. So I'll just keep running and um, you know, just whatever takes my fancy. But if it's um, something like that where you can you know help or assist other people, then oh, that's really rewarding. It's what about one the next book? Yeah, what about the next book? What are you going to write about next? Maybe uh, working with Mike Peru. Uh, there are so oh, many. Good book. I would read that. There's so many stories there. Oi. <laughs> I would definitely read that. Hey, well, thank you so much for stopping yeah. by. Yeah. Oh, be, thanks very much for having me. It'll be a short chapter yeah. book, that's for sure. Mike okay. Peru, The Closet Years. <laughs> lots, lots of pictures. Lots of pictures. No. <laughs> no, that's the thing. No pictures. You too. The latest oh, edition wow. of Dom's book, Running a Love Story, is available now, as is his audio book. Yeah, thanks, Dom. Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys as well. I'm not Thank sure, you. actually.